the Plotcast podcast with the Potty Plotters. Hello, and here we are again. Oh, I want to say happy as can be. <laughs> anyway, welcome back. And thank you for listening to the Potty Plotters Plotcast podcast. This is episode 25, and I'm Elaine. And I'm Julia. <laughs> I'm laughing because you've written I'm Julia when you're talking. Well, I know I wrote it. It doesn't matter, does it? Just say what's there, Julia. Say what you see and all that. And if you'd like to get in touch with us at any time via our social media channels, please do. A reminder of what they are, Julia. Thank you. It's Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Potty Plotters. TikTok at, at The Potty Plotters. Email us naughtycorner at pottyplotters.uk. Or check out our website pottyplotters.uk. And actually, Beverly Jane Lee has just done that and asks via our Facebook page. I can't do accents, so I'm not going to. Well, so, but do you know what Beverly's accent is? No. Oh, right. no, don't so do I won't it do anyway. it there. No, it's rude. I am a complete novice grower here, but love the podcast and now inspired to try my hand at growing veg and fruit here in our new garden. Did manage to grow spring onions, which I forgot where they were last year, but miraculously materialised this year in a pot, which was amazing. So, question, should I plant sweet pea seeds now or buy seedlings already sprouting, etc, please, to go in a pot? Thanks very much. B. Well, B. Since we're already into July now, I would say go and buy some in a pot. Um, you could try our quick germination method, which we talked about early on in the podcast and episode two, actually, way, way back. But I think now it's too late, really, to be going down that route. Uh, have a look at that for next time, for, for later in the year or next year. But this time of year, I would go and buy yourself some. OK, and we've also had another one. And this one is from Lisa Straubs in Wales. She asks, when is it too late to plant sweet corn? Again, looking at the dates, we're looking into July now. So what I would say is go and buy yourself some plants rather than set the sweet corn seeds yourself. Uh, you could do. It's always a gamble with the seasons. You may get something, you may not. But I would say go and buy the plants and pop them in now ASAP. And you should have something to harvest at the end of the season. You could do. I'd actually wait until the sales start for the seeds, Julia, because generally you can get them from about 50p and save them till next year. Because yeah. um, I do think it might be a bit late. But yeah, yeah have a go. Contact the Potty Plotters anytime on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Potty Plotters or email naughtycorner at pottyplotters.uk. Well, it's amazing that people have actually got in touch with us. But onward and upward, there's so much growing out there, watering, pricking out, planting as well as harvesting now. But take a break sit down relax and listen to us rambling on and we'll tell you all about it including a chat with tracy reed about the national garden scheme but before that let's get going what we're going to talk about this week anyway julia well let's talk berries and currants and it's a topic that is alive on the allotments i've had everybody coming to me i've had jerry and the plot behind me i've had people on the plot next door to me and they're all complaining because although they've got lots of lovely berries what do you think is attacking them pigeons absolutely they're out there again yeah. they're sitting on the fences and waiting so what's your advice Lane? well what i've done on mine actually i didn't know you'd had so many uh, people oh. complaining about them but what i do is i net them so i've got pegs and i've got debris netting and all i do is simply put loads and loads of netting all over my currants and uh, peg them to the plants so that nothing can get at them and i think that that's the way to work i don't mind them having a few actually but not all of them because i do want them for my blackcurrant jelly uh, cordials and everything else that I make. Yeah and they've been at the strawberries as well so really you need some bird netting to protect all of your berries because they will go for anything that's brightly coloured they will go for them and you'll not have much to harvest. What about bird scarers? Do they work? You've got some ribbons on yours haven't you? Yeah so I put some ribbons up um, just to kind of flutter in the wind and they've done a certain amount of good but I wouldn't say it's completely stopped them. I think they've realised what they are now 
and they've started to make an attack. I did it for the peas, to be honest with you, and they have attacked them. So um, other people have perhaps used um, old CDs and strung them up between the plants. Again, they work with the uh, pigeons and, and everything, but once they start to get aware of what it is, the, the, best, the safest bet really, as you say, is to net them. Do you think pigeons laugh? I think, they're, I think they're in hysterics. I think they think they're at a comedy club when we all leave. So another um, thing that people have been doing, well, Jackie, plot eight, you wouldn't believe She's it. She's plot seven. Plot seven? Yeah. All oh, right, OK. Anyway, Jackie, plot seven, you wouldn't believe it at first. She's so meek and mild normally. Yeah. But do you know what she does with the pigeons? I dread you? to think now. Go on. You know those kids' big super soaker things? Oh, yeah. She sits there when nobody's watching and she squirts them and scares them off. And I think if you're doing, if you grow in your own in your garden and you've got the time to sit there and do it, that will deter them eventually. Top notch advice, no Latin included. The Potty Plotters Podcast. The next thing I want to talk about, Julia, is spinach. Now, I know producer Gareth loves spinach. I think that's something to do with being Popeye or something very similar. Um, It's not something that I grow a huge amount of, but it is so versatile and it's so easy. You grow it as well. I love it. I love it. It's not improved my muscles or anything, but I do think it's lovely. (laughs) And especially when it's, it's baby spinach. You know, it's not right when somebody does that, is it? What? Shows in us front the of you. <laughs> yeah, shows us the muscles and feels them. No, it's not that kind of show, Gareth. So we're going to move on now. And spinach. All I will say is it's very, very easy to grow. And we have lots and lots of it um, on site because a lot of people like to grow it. And what I would say to you is now is the time to do it. All you have to do is to sprinkle it onto multipurpose compost, the seeds that is, onto the multipurpose compost. Make sure that it's damp. Put some multipurpose compost on the top of it and cover it and then all I do is I leave it in the greenhouse and I can guarantee within seven days it actually germinates I never put it anywhere where the mice can get though because the mice do like the flavour of the seeds ah, well we've been doing a little bit of a challenge haven't we yeah. um, and you have been growing the spinach in the trays like that yeah and I've been growing them out on the plot directly in the soil now in all honesty, I have been covering them once I've sown the seed, but they've come up just as quickly as yours have in the uh, trays. So what I would say is you can do it your method and then obviously you're going to prick them out, I assume, and plant yeah. them. Yeah. But I have found that it does work just as well on the plots, but you will need to net them especially well everything will go for them the mice the birds everything but they are coming through and they're looking quite strong and healthy and another top tip actually julia is what i do is as the leaves um are mature enough to actually pick i pick them i take a little plastic bag round with me or a tupperware box and i put the leaves straight into it and that's something i don't wash actually and then what i do is as soon as i get it home i stuff it in a bag in the freezer and i keep topping that up so that by the end if it is that I haven't used all of it on um, salads or um, perhaps in stuffed pancakes or something similar I've actually got a bag full left in the freezer and it's brilliant to use. One thing that perhaps we ought to mention is that when it is hot um, spinach does have a tendency to bolt you can get varieties that are slower to bolt but what I would recommend is especially at this time of year in July I would be looking at planting them somewhere that's maybe in partial shade definitely because they will bolt another thing is you need to keep on top of the watering with them so that the the new leaves grow and and, and perhaps something that people don't realize is pick the leaves from the outer uh, part of the plant so that there's always a new growing tip in the center and like you've suggested maybe just pick a few at a time and and freeze them if you've not got a use for them all in one go but i just love them in salad elaine (laughs) i was gonna say i'm looking at you and you've got well have you bought your washing with you? What are all these socks on the table? Well, you know when you get odd socks? Well, I've got something that you can use them for now, Julia, and that is bring them up the allotments. And you know when your sweet corn starts to grow its cobs? Yes. That's the bits that you grow and yeah. eat, yeah? Yeah. What I would say is to deter the pigeons, magpies, mice and all rats and, and people from taking them, all I would say is put one on your corn put one on it and it will stop honestly it stops the creatures eating because they can't get through that sock oh that's a good idea but once the cob is actually set rather than before the uh, yes because otherwise they won't grow will they no no 
not be no good. No, but it does stop, honestly. And if I find the other sock when I'm doing the washing, I can just take it up back again, can't I? I just tell lies, Julia. They don't belong to me. The Plotcast Podcast with the Potty Plotters. So we've come outside, Elaine, from the polytunnel, which is quite a relief, actually. It was so hot in there. And we're going to dig up some taters. So uh, these were some that we planted in episode... Thingy. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and how do you know they're ready? Uh, well, the tops have started to die back. So you can see now that the flowers have gone and uh, they literally have started to droop. So all that we're going to do now is I always use a fork. I never use a spade, but I'm guaranteed, almost guaranteed that I will hit a big tater and fork it <laughs> <laughs> don't say that when you've had a drink <laughs> right so you've already done the side where you laid them in a trench yeah and the side that you're doing now that's where you use your big dobber one it? that's right yeah so great big holes and we put a potato in each of the holes and now you can see where the potato tops have come through yeah. so all i'm going to do now julia is literally pull the potato tops like that i don't want them i want them out the way so that can go over there and then what I'm going to do is literally put my fork in and as I say I'll probably hit a potato already that's if they're all oh, 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 oh. yeah so exciting oh, they're nice. so they're nice and clean Elaine they are yeah um it's because I polish everything <laughs> before it goes in Julia <laughs> and what's going to be hopefully really good oh they're all at me now so just stick um your fork in push it down and then just pull it up. Oh, oh, oh now I didn't fork them. Oh, them. oh, victory. That was like you scooped them up with your fork. <laughs> That's good. Have you got any containers or anything we could... Oh, yeah. as if by magic, I, Julia. I, I did come prepared because I thought, well, you know, we need them for the chips. So okay. get them in there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so put those in there and make sure that you get every one of them up because you are guaranteed that if you don't, these little tiny ones will grow again when you don't want them to. No, because we don't want this to be a potato bed next year, do we? No, I just want it to be a bed, actually. But Look, there you go. Are you tired? <laughs> it's been a long day, love. And smash down the soil after you've done the taters. I don't think that's too bad, actually. Shall we do some more? Yeah, that's not enough to get chips. <laughs> the Plotcast Podcast with the Potty Plotters. As you've been driving around, Elaine, you might have noticed some of those uh, arrows that are in yellow and black advertising in the National Garden Scheme. Yep. Have you ever wondered what they're about? You know, don't you, because you've been. So let's talk to Tracy Reid from the National Garden Scheme about it. Well, if you don't already know, the National Garden Scheme is where private gardens open to the public, normally uh, one or two weekends in a year. We take admission money and that money goes to the National Garden Scheme charities um, and it's charities, nursing and healthcare charities such as Macmillan, Hospice UK, Parkinson's UK and they also support garden projects. That is amazing. I mean, I always used to think that the NGS was the nosy garden scheme because it is the opportunity to get round there and have a right good gulp at what everybody's growing. It's definitely the nosy garden scheme as well. I mean, who wouldn't want to go behind the garden gate and see what people are up to? <laughs> are the gardens all very grand and, and huge, Tracy, or is there a mix? There is definitely not all grand and huge. There are some beautiful gardens. We're very lucky. Some of the big houses do open for the National Garden Scheme. Quite often they're open at other times of the year public. But we've also got private gardens. Some are really small, so are an average size garden, but they're just really keen gardeners and people want to open up their space, give you some tea and cake and let you enjoy their garden. And where is the best cake? I mean, let's get down to it. Yes, these gardens are marvellous, but what about the cake? Well, I have to tell you, we open our own garden and, <laughs> and I've learned to bake, but honestly, the competition is fierce within the county. <laughs> These, these ladies and gentlemen who bake, um, it's a bit of a competition, I've got to say. So there's a lovely set of gardens up in Balborough near Chesterfield. And the lady there is probably queen of cakes. And she made a little recipe book. And I bake a lot of her cakes from the book. But honestly, nearly everywhere you go, you'll get somebody's special cake that they've made. Quite often featuring fruit or produce from the garden. 
even better. I mean, there's so many things when you go to people's gardens that never cease to amaze me. I mean, yes, you've got your pavilion. Yes, you've got everything actually in yours. <laughs> but, train station. Yeah, <laughs> but you've got, actually, yeah, geez. And you've got mirrors and all kinds of things that are just fantastic. And invariably, you come away with plants. That's another thing. Is I think plants. I was just borrowing, that was all. But they can have them back if they want. My mum would have nicked a few uh, little snippets, that's little all. Little snippets. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And we go to a lot of gardens. Uh, we That's partly why we opened our own garden. We like to go visit gardens. And you do find lots of ideas. And I think, you know, I like to go to grand gardens. I'll go to stately homes as well as everybody else. But when you visit somebody's private garden, you'll get an idea of what will work in your own space. You know, we've all got a washing line and we've all got dustbins and we've all got little bits and pieces in our garden. And that's what I like to see, how people have, have worked with that. Um, and the other thing, like you mentioned, the plants. Nearly every open garden will have a few plants for sale. And just by the nature of them, there will be plants that will grow for you in your garden because it's local. And they're normally charging a few pounds. In fact, I was at a garden yesterday and I... Um, probably spent £10 and came back with a tray of beautiful plants that would have cost me three times that somewhere else. <laughs> She's I, I did, I did pay for them. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't just go around with my scissors snipping you away. <laughs> so what would you say to encourage anybody who's listening to this? Why why open your garden? Why let people you've never met before trample and have a gawp around your garden? I think generally, if you're a gardener and you're proud of your garden... And you want to share it with people. We always have a lovely day when we open our garden. You meet such nice people. And so that's one thing. Quite a lot of our gardeners too have got a specific reason for opening. So they might have been supported by one of the charities. So some open for that reason. But whatever the reason, you will really enjoy it. And at the end of the day, you've made a few hundred pounds for these charities. It's such a good feeling and you will genuinely really enjoy it. Tracy, how do people find out which gardens are open? I know that you've got a little booklet that you get. Yes. So where can you get that? And also, you know, if we were just kind of driving along the street and we saw a sign, what do the signs look like? Right. So the if you're just driving around and you see a big yellow sign that says National Garden Scheme, Garden Open for Charity, they're what to look out for. The booklets are generally available in your local garden centre. Um, the national website is ngs.org.uk and you can go on any time and it'll show you the, week, the gardens coming up that coming weekend. And the best garden you've ever been to? Oh, that's difficult. But my very favourite garden I probably went to yesterday and it's up in Glossop. It's a bit of a trip from where I live, but just not a big garden. Just really fascinating and full of features. I really like it. But we've got such a lot of really, really beautiful gardens in Derbyshire. And I think the best thing is when you drive up to a house and you think, this looks like a normal house. And you go through that garden gate and you're absolutely amazed. That's probably the best thing. We know that you've got famous ambassadors supporting the National Garden Scheme. Mary Berry and, yes. you know, Joe Wiley and the likes. Are there any famous people opening their gardens that can go and have a nose around? There are quite a few, but I think they keep them um, quite quiet, Ooh. actually. I'll tell you who does open their garden for the National Garden Scheme, and that's the king. There are some of the royal gardens open, so you can't get any more famous than that. You can. Yeah, high growth. And does he bake cake as well? It probably has staff for that, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure. You could get him a National Garden Scheme apron, perhaps. So two weeks ago, you decided to make some comfrey tea yeah. and we're now going to decant it. Well, Gareth's standing a very long, long way away in the middle of the roadway, to be fair. He's, he's prepared to risk that. I'm standing at a distance and I can see that you've got your gloves ready. The comfrey tea absolutely reeks and I really do mean that. So, yeah, stand back, stand back. I've got a bucket, but it well, does need... Is that for us to be... <laughs> for us to be sinking when you do it <laughs> oh you'll find out in a minute so all that we're going to do is put some debris netting across that bucket and we're going to filter that comfrey tea i'm laughing because i know what it smells like i've suffered this for two weeks right wait there and it's sort of grown skin over the top Ooh. of it yeah oh. so 
Right, debris netting, just a little piece. Oh. <laughs> oh. Gareth's ran away. Oh, I can't smell it. <laughs> you will in a minute. Right no, then. No. Well, all I'm going to do oh, is oh, I'm no. just going to... I don't want to hold this microphone close to you while you splash. Oh, it, it does smell. Oh, Ooh, now I'm getting over. <laughs> yeah. It's not me, honest. <laughs> oh, I'll say... Now we let Elaine. Why have you done oh, this? What's oh, the bucket that? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Why have you done it? And what are the benefits? Right, the benefits are Julia. <laughs> it's a brilliant food. <laughs> it's a brilliant food for plants, and it's free. The downside is that it absolutely reeks. But what I'm going to do is tomorrow I'll put this <laughs> in a bottle because I can't stand much more. My mouth's watering. This is a great feed for your plants, so it, you can use it on all of your plants. But what I will say is it's also a great deterrent for burglars. Hints and tips for shortcuts to success. The Potty Plotters Plotcast. Well, I don't know if you remember, Julia, but uh, episode 20, we were setting French beans and uh, runner beans as well. I can tell you that they were desperate to be potted on. So I've actually planted them now out into the allotment and I've got them in tubs, in big containers and also in my galvanised dustbins. So we go and have a look at those and see how they're getting on. All I would say is though, all they need is loads of water and I did put loads of ore smoke there as well. Oh lovely and the uh, dwarf... They, the French beans were a dwarf variety, so they no are. need to support them. Not at all. But your runner beans are growing what? up poles. So I've put bamboo canes in and also silver birch twigs as well. Ah, and how do they know to climb up there? Do you have to help them along or do they do No, they just have a map, Julia, and they just know how to do it. And ironically, they all go the same way. Ah. Oh, Ooh, that's clever. And do you have to protect them against any pests or anything? No, not at all. Not all even your husband? No. And he really likes them. But all I would say is that if you have trouble with red flowered runner beans, then all I would say is pop a little bit of netting around to stop the birds from pecking at them because they're red. They're inquisitive and want to know all about them. And that's why I've grown as well White Lady. They've got white flowers. The birds never bother with them. Oh, that's good. That's good. And uh, whereabouts are they on your plot? Where have you put these tubs that you've got? I've put the tubs in the shade and I've put it so that their faces of the beans will be in the bright light. So I've covered them by other plants and they're actually down by the raspberries and also by the sweet peas as well. Oh, that's nice. Thanks so much to Tracy Reed for telling us all about the work of the National Garden Scheme and hope that all who open their gardens and all who visit have a great time and are successful. But next time we'll be talking about chilies, cucumbers, Julia's melons, obviously, and we'll have an update on the peas. We'll be chatting to a person about the trials and tribulations of taking on an allotment as a completely new beginner. But enough chatting, Julia. Are those chips ready yet? Did you put the chip pan on when we came over here? Yeah, yeah, we've got a queue forming outside the gate as well. And do you think that Mr Popeye will actually just sort of forgo the spinach and just go for the chips? I would, I would. Mm, he's different though. The Plotcast Podcast with the Potty Plotters is an Amberland Media production.